as you can see there's um, there's an awful lot of wind here but uh, not not very much sun today so this is um, a pretty rotten situation for, for me today you know hello there as you probably gathered by now, this um, this video is about uh, alternative energy or renewable energy. So, um, as you know, the government has been like trying to steer everyone towards um, getting solar panels, and uh, you know we're supposed to be heading towards a hundred percent in renewable future. So uh, what I've done here is on a sort of micro scale do exactly what the government is doing, although I've taken a somewhat different approach from how they're doing things. Uh, and to be honest, there's an awful lot of stupidity and idiocy in the, the government's approach in some kind of misguided belief that you can rely 100% on wind and solar in this country, which you, you just can't. So, you know, on a, the national grid is enormously uh, wasteful. There's about 50% of all the electricity is lost in the grid. Okay, the resistance that's created by this giant network of wires means you lose an awful lot of electricity. Um, on a local level, that doesn't happen so bad. So in my situation, right, um, I've got uh, is it 14 or 15 solar panels, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, 15. One on the roof of the shed, which you saw in the video, and two arrays of seven. So that gives me about seven kilowatts of uh, generating power from that. I've also got a, a small uh, wind turbine, which generates 800 watts per hour, uh, ideally. And that can operate 24-7. Um, so in the in the summertime in Ireland, you can do really well with solar. So I would say about seven plus, if you're really lucky, eight months of the year you could manage with solar. And I've obviously batteries, I've four big batteries, which are uh, lithium batteries. Of course, battery technology is constantly improving, and it will get better and better as the years go by. Um, the great advantage with this situation is, unlike a car, the batteries don't have to be carried around. Each battery I've got weighs like 33 kilos. So you can imagine if you had to cart that around all the time, you know, that's uh, about 250 kilograms in, to uh, you know, uh, in total. So it's, uh, sorry, no, it's about half that. Sorry, my, my arithmetic's terrible, isn't it? So yeah, it's about half that, probably about 125 kilograms, which is like the weight of two smallish people. Um, so, I mean, uh, when you've got it static and it's sitting in a shed, you're a lot more efficient because you're not having to carry them about. Um, so I'd say lithium is a lot more suitable for these kind of applications than actually for a car. Um, I would hope that electric vehicles will have much better batteries in the future. At the moment, I think they're, they're pretty rubbish still. Uh, they need to improve a hell of a lot more before they're really cost effective and viable, uh, you know, as an alternative to a petrol or diesel car. The hybrid cars seem to be pretty good though. Um, I would say they're they're worth looking at for sure, but electric, not really. You know, uh, in my situation where uh, you know I'm off grid and making all the electricity myself, um, in summertime, yeah, you could certainly charge up an electric car, but in winter that could be a bit a bit tricky. So as you saw from the video. Um, we have a storm here, it's actually too windy, I've had to turn the turbine off because it's excessive. And there's not a whole lot of sun either, so today's generating capacity is pretty rotten. 
So that's why you see the generator there. So a backup for when there's either no wind or no sun or no sun and way too much wind, you, you end up either exhausting your batteries or you have to turn to a generator, which means you've got to use diesel or petrol, or you might be able to use an LPG or propane generator if you can get one. They are not very common in this country. So, you know, it, that's on a micro scale is what is happening in this country, right? Because we have quite a lot of windmills and there is some solar power. But the government ends up having to power up the coal stations, the gas uh, stations, uh, and oil-fired stations as well to provide sufficient electricity over the winter because, uh, to be honest, we just can't do it. We can't do it with solar and wind. It's too unreliable. And, you know, there's a whole country for the people. What is it? It's at least six. Uh, if you include the north, maybe seven, including Northern Ireland. Okay, they have a separate grid. But, you know, if you're trying to power the whole island, um, you need a hell of a lot of electricity for 7 million people. Um, and that just really isn't realistic at the moment with the current technology that's available. I mean, it would appear there is technology that could be available, which is much better. Uh, although it's not commercially available because it's not in the interests of the oil companies or the gas companies, electricity companies, um, etc. to make these cheap uh, alternative uh, energy providing technologies available to us plebs you know uh, they're gonna sell us oil forever if they can and sell us sort of sort of substandard or redundant technologies really uh, I mean I've seen people you know buying solar panels is way out of date you know off people here um, so the technology is constantly evolving, but I don't think the Irish market really keeps up with the latest developments in the industries. Um, and you have to be so careful dealing with cowboys. I mean, I've been caught out uh, myself and, uh, you know, bad installers. There's lots of rip-off artists. I actually bought all of the equipment apart from this turbine in Spain. It was much, much cheaper to get stuff shipped from Spain. In fact, it was roughly 50% of the price that you pay here in Ireland. So, I mean, it's it can work for you, but it's very it's fraught with difficulties and quite hard to set it all up, especially if you're going to go the off-grid uh, route. The trouble is, say you've got a new home or a derelict home that has no connection. You're looking at two, three, possibly more to get it set up, to get a connection, yeah? And then when you add in the cost of the, uh, and you know, the, the monthly fee and the VAT, I think the very, very cheapest would be about six, seven hundred euro, not including any usage at all. So just to have the system there, your standing charge, and the VAT and all that. Um, on that, you're you're going to run to into six, seven hundred euro a year just to have it sitting there. So um, yeah, grid being on the grid is a very expensive. Um, so obviously, I'm going to spend some money on on petrol with the. Uh, generator but a lot of the time really you only need to run it for a few hours uh, you know and that's not going to be every day if you have you know good day with loads of wind or loads of Sun in the winter um, you should be able to top your batteries back up and then you don't need the, the, to use the generators um, obviously the you know the better time of the year is sort of spring through to uh, autumn September time really once you get into October it's getting a bit dodgy yeah so anyway I would say that um, 
you've got to be prepared to deal with these inherent risks if you want to go off grid. I suppose if you've already got a grid connection, it makes sense to, uh, you know, get an inverter that's compatible with the, you know, the grid system. So anyway, that's all I want to say about um, uh, alternative uh, power. It, it can be viable, but it's not. It's not easy. It's a bit of a minefield. Uh, in the long run, it will pay for itself. But um, if you're just going solar only, I think that'd take a very long time if you live in an area that's not uh, got good sort of south-facing sort of, um, possibilities. That's what you need. You need to be ideally kind of reasonably high up and with um, panels set up facing due south. If that's not going to be possible for you, then you're probably wasting your time in this country. I mean, if you're in Spain or somewhere, yeah, happy days. You you make a ton of electricity from solar. But as you, we all know how shit the weather is here, <laughs> you know. But what we do have is wind. And I mean, this country could also be potentially a massive producer of wave energy. Like in France, in the Bay of Biscay, um, they set up a um, turbine situation with the tidal current there in the 1960s, right? I think that's been going for um, something like 65 years now, almost. Almost 65 years they've been making free electricity from underwater turbines in the uh, estuary there. And we could be doing that in the Shannon, could be doing that with Liffey, but of course, you know, uh, our government has n absolutely no vision whatsoever. Uh, the whole of the Atlantic coast could be used for like wave machines, but our government is only interested in feathering its own nest and making money for their pals. They're not really interested in providing cheap electricity to the Irish population. In fact, they just have no regard or interest in the average Joe, as far as I'm concerned. They, they just don't give it absolute monkeys about any of us who are like not part of their important sort of Dublin sort of um, scene. So uh, a big F you to the Irish government, as far as I'm concerned. What a useless bunch of whatever's a shower of blaz you can fill in the blanks yourself anyway that's it for today thank you for watching if you like what i have to say um uh, please give a thumbs up and you can subscribe as well if you like i'd be delighted if you want to follow my future videos by subscribing okay bye for now